John MacArthur said this about Jesus and healing in the Bible. And immediately after, the boys over at Remnant Radio put together an amazing video just going over the facts of what he said, and it is marvelous. All right, so shout out to Remnant Radio, big fan of their channel. I plan on uh, actually doing something with them in August. If you guys don't know who Remnant Radio is, super dope channel. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. In my opinion, they are some of the most theologically sound continuationists on the platform. I love it. And uh, John MacArthur is not a continuationist. He is what many would call a cessationalist, meaning that the gifts and the way we see them manifested in the New Testament have ceased. And so he makes some kind of hyperbolic statements or, or he makes statements in a hyperbolic fashion, but he's not being hyperbolic. And he made some claims about healing in the Bible that are, are just flat out wrong. And I love that the guys at Rin Radio completely took him to task on it. So uh, we're going to react to their video of this and, uh, and just kind of let them lay out some of their arguments. Now, if we, backing off from that, if we just said, let's look at Jesus, and if anybody is healing today, then, and if Jesus' healing is the pattern and the apostles is the pattern, how did they heal? So remember, so John MacArthur's argument here is, if Jesus' healing and, and the apostles' healing is the pattern, how did they heal? That is the question. And listen to the claims he goes on to make. And I'll simply remind you of it. We'll make a comparison and see if today it works like that. First, Jesus healed with a word or a touch. That's all it took. He touched, he spoke, they were healed. Secondly, Jesus healed instantaneously. Claim number one, Jesus healed with a word or a touch. The point before this was we're going to look at how the apostles and Jesus healed. So it's point number one true. Bible theologian, Bible nerds, it's point number one too. Is, is point number two true? Jesus healed instantaneously. Is point number two true? Never in all his healings does the Bible say he healed somebody and they started getting better. No, there was never a process. Because if there was a process, the point wasn't made, right? Because if there was a process, then it could be explained another way. It was instantaneous. The centurion's servant was healed. I love it. Matthew 8. It was instantaneous. Is that true? Is that true? 8.13. That very hour. Wait, 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 wait. You just said Jesus healed instantaneously, Mr. MacArthur. Dr. Is he a doctor? Mr. MacArthur. Pastor MacArthur. All respect due to Honorable Pope MacArthur. Then in the same breath, said that very hour. What? You just said it was instantaneous, then you said it was in that same hour. I don't know how instantaneous and same hour work together, but let's just keep going. The woman with the bleeding problem, it went away immediately. Jesus okay. healed 10 lepers instantaneously. The crippled man at the pool of Bethesda immediately became well. Thirdly, Jesus healed totally, totally. When someone was healed, they were totally and completely healed. The only kind of healing Jesus ever did. He didn't partially heal. He healed totally. Fourthly, mm. he healed anybody. He healed anybody. He didn't have to have a long line of people filling out cards. And he certainly didn't have a whole gr group of people who came into the meeting in wheelchairs and left in wheelchairs. If they had wheelchairs or crutches or whatever. Luke 440 says, while the sun was setting, all who had any sick with various diseases brought them to him and laying his hands on every one of them, he was healing them. It's an incredible thing. He healed everybody. He healed everybody instantaneously. He healed everybody totally. And he healed everybody with a word. There wasn't some fault or all. It's just a word. Fifthly, he healed organic disease. He didn't just go around Palestine healing lower back pain, heart palpitations, headaches, and other things like that. He healed the most obvious organic disease, crippled bent legs, withered hands, blind eyes, paralysis. Sixthly, he raised the dead. He raised the dead. He came upon a funeral, and he raised the dead. Remember that? Here comes a funeral procession. The widow's going to bury her son, and Jesus stops the profession. Uh, the procession touches the casket and says, young man, arise. And Jesus the dead man sat up and funeral. began to speak. Now, I'll tell you something. People who tout the gift of healing today don't spend a lot of time in funeral processions. The reason is obvious. And you need to note, by the way, that Jesus did virtually all his healing and raising the dead in public before vast crowds of people. Why? Because the gift of healing was real and it was an authenticating gift. He used it to confirm the claim that he was the Son of God in a way that displayed his power and compassion. Then we ask the question, how did the, the disciples or apostles heal? How did they heal? How did the twelve and the seventy and others who worked with them like Barnabas and Philip and Stephen? And those are the only ones. It didn't just run rampant through everybody in the church. But those people who had that gift, how did they heal? How did they do it? Well, same way. They healed with a word or a touch. We see. Is that true? And some of the stuff he's saying sounds true on the surface, but Bible nerds see that in the book of Acts. They healed instantaneously, immediately. Remember the temple gate, Peter and John, the man immediately went to his feet, started leaping, walking, praising God. They healed totally, not partial, total. They healed everybody. 
In fact, people who got under Peter's shadow got healed. They healed organic disease, not just functional, psychosomatic, symptomatic problems, and the apostles even raised the dead. Now, nobody is exhibiting those six traits in a healing ministry today. So if this is supposed to be the recapturing of the apostolic era, it's really out of sync with that. And a final note, according to Scripture, those who possess those abilities to heal could use their gift at will. Okay, so uh, just listen. Do you, do you guys see the certainty he said these things with? Just a sheer certainty that he, that he said all this with. And anyone that's even, I feel like, a rudimentary you know, nerd of the Scriptures just knows the basics of the scriptures to go like, wait, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. This is a really like, like stringent criteria of how Jesus and the apostles healed. And it almost sounds like he's contradicting himself. Now, here's what I like about the remnant radio boys is, oh, are they excited to get surgical with this one? Let me just let them cook. If you, well, backing go watch their whole video. Go watch their whole video, but we're just going to let them cook for a minute. Off that, if we just said, let's Sorry. I don't know if you guys caught that. He actually, one of his points contradicts another point. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> I, I did. I don't know if you noticed it. No. He talked about how, sure. well, point one was that, that God, Jesus was, used, Jesus was used to heal the sick only by touch or when he spoke to them. But then later on, he goes, and the apostle Paul's shadow healed people. By word and touch, but then there was a shadow? So like one of the requirements for it to be considered the gift of healing is that it be done by speech or touch. And then he goes on to close with a thought that did not include either of those things. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, so let's start off uh, at the top. Apostle John MacArthur says, uh, if Jesus is healing, uh, healing is the, is the pattern and the apostles is the past pattern. How did they heal? Uh, and I'll simply remind you of it. Uh, we'll make a comparison and see if today it works like that. So he's saying, uh, does, does today's miracles re reflect the kind of miracles we see in the life of Jesus and the apostles? Kind of want to turn it over to you guys. Do you think that that is a uh, good way to uh, frame this discussion? Well, it's it, it's not the best way. I mean, it's certainly relevant to look at the narratives of Scripture, see how they did it, and try to apply it to us. But if you take his same criteria and you apply it to other spiritual gifts, like let's say you take the gift of teaching, you say, well, Jesus taught with authority, not like the scribes of Pharisees. And G Jesus drew multitudes of people to his teaching. And uh, Jesus always perfectly communicated the truth in love. And Jesus uh, always spoke in, uh, with the fullness of the Spirit. And he never had any doctrinal error. Which of us can say that in our teaching, we've never, ever, ever, ever had any doctrinal error? Jesus can say that. But we can't. So that's a good point. That's, a, that's a good. If we're going to look at other gifts, other, other gifts, right? But meaning, can other... Do other gifts always have to be exemplified the way Jesus exemplified the gift of healing? That's that's not a bad argument, but but it gets better. Yes. And so are we going to conclude from this that because we can't teach like Jesus, right. therefore the gift of teaching no longer exists? Because MacArthur is saying, because healing doesn't look like it did for Jesus, therefore healing doesn't exist. So the comparison doesn't make sense anyway. Now, once we drill into the examples, we also see, as you said, sometimes they contradict each other. Sometimes they're just flat, untrue statements uh, as to what happens in the scripture. Sometimes they're drawing too heavily or uh, making inferences uh, that are that go beyond the text. And and sometimes there are arguments from science. We'll talk about all of those things. We're only at this point assessing like the first two sentences of what he said. And we're saying already, you're two sentences in and it's not true. This is a great point. Shout out to, I, I love this chat. I want you guys to know I'm a big fan of you guys, all right? Because sometimes y'all just be having great takes. Zero Custom said, I don't blame Pastor MacArthur for wanting to take shots at miracle healers uh, of today, but his entire argument is whack. Okay, so let's let the remnant boys cook. John, you're not teaching like Jesus. So does that mean that you don't have a gift of teaching? I think you do have a gift of teaching. So it doesn't apply it's to not that. not that so good I, of one. What because of <laughs> What's that? how bad his logic is. <laughs> he I said, said it wasn't, wasn't that good of a gift of teaching because of how bad and reductionistic his arguments are. Uh, also, I would say that on this argument, I think I put this somewhere else in the notes, that this is taking, um, it's, not, it's not an appropriate way of looking at a text. He is taking a uh, descriptive text that describes the acts of the apostles in Jesus and then is pulling out principles and prescriptively applying them to our life and practice. In fact, I, feel, I, I thought the, 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 the reform guys didn't do this. I thought that was only the crazy charismatics that did this, that they used descriptive passages to build prescriptive theology. The one is Pentecostals will do this when it comes to uh, salvation in the book of Acts. They'll say, look at all these people who spoke in tongues when they got saved. Therefore, salvation and tongues are inherently tied together. Mm -hmm. So they take a descriptive text describing what's happening right. and then applying it prescriptively for right. us. You must do this action in order to be saved. 
Uh, and I'm not saying that, you know, John is anywhere nearly uh, flirting with an, a, a line of heresy like right. the Oneness Pentecostals yep. are yep. in either the doctrines of the Trinity or in the doctrines of tongues. Yep. Um, but I would I would submit that a prescriptive text does not get to, if we pull principles out of a pres uh, descriptive text, we don't get to apply it prescriptively and say, well, because this is describing these events, therefore we must do these things. It'd be the equivalent of saying anytime there's yep. a dispute in the church, we should split up rather than striving for the bond of peace. Because in Acts right. 15, Paul and Barnabas had a dispute mm. and they split up. You no, know, the, the, the prescriptive text of strive for the, the for the bond of peace and strive for unity and bear one another's burdens like those prescriptive texts take authority over the descriptive text and i think that uh, it's an inappropriate way of pulling principles and demanding that this is the standard it's another thing to say like hey you know jesus and the apostles did these things we should be aiming for that we should be looking for that we should take note of their pattern but then to say you know um uh, that there is some kind of like again you know uh, i'm not going to take a text that says jesus picks up mud and throws it in some guy's eyes and heals him with mud therefore this is how we heal that is using a descriptive text right. inappropriately and i think that's what john's doing unless you're mike todd talk about never mind never mind and it's okay mike todd apologized for that uh, i believe that all of the apostles all the elders all the deacons and all the members of the early church that operated in spiritual gifts none of them could have walked in the gift of healing. Right. i think if you walk right. through this list and we're gonna we're gonna prove it as we walk through it no one in the early church fits this description with the exception of jesus so none of them could miller tell me what you think of this so that here's here's what he says Go next he says you heard the audio but now we're gonna break it down so next he says first jesus healed with a word or a touch that's all it took he touched he spoke they were healed miller what's your response I would say, yes, he did. And that should be something we could expect. I would also say there's a number of other ways that he healed. And one of the other examples that he gave was the 10 lepers. And what he fails to do is recognize that they weren't healed instantly. He's, he's, he takes that as the example of people that were healed instantly, but it doesn't they say that. It actually says, it says they were as they, they went. went. Hey, you want to see something kind of crazy? Over 75% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribe please consider subscribing and turning your bell notification on so that you don't miss anything we have going here all right peace so john macarthur with such certainty said that whenever jesus healed they were healed instantly yet we see the example of the 10 lepers said as they went there was another example of within the same hour am i missing it i need a johnny mac apologist to explain that to me how do you say one thing and then there's clear examples of the opposite set i mean like i know I'm like, i wrote how? that down too I just the irony there is he's it he's proves the opposite point lying <laughs> like he's just just wrong he doesn't know what he's talking about yeah it proves just the opposite of his of the point he's making you're right right but yeah but josh did the, my hair out josh help us what are some examples like i think you said this earlier jesus didn't heal only by speech and right. touch and that there were some right. other and ways nor did the apostles. On that a little bit yeah, nor did the What's apostles, and I made this point earlier, right? So Jesus threw mud in some guy's eyes in John 9, verse 6. Uh, shadow I mean, he literally people. baseball chunked it, like probably yeah. 95, 97 I, miles per hour. I mean, if, if you had a clock he's on a that perfect thing, pitcher, I would imagine, if he's Jesus. He's never thrown an imperfect pitch. But but you know what? He had a perfect pitch, and there are no pitchers anymore today. Mm. That's because correct. no one pitches that No one threw that mud like Jesus. Uh, what a mudslinger. Okay, so Jesus <laughs> it, threw mud in some guy's eyes in John 9, 6. His shadow, Peter's shadow is healing people. Handkerchiefs are healing people in Acts 19, 12. Uh, healing so hankies. the question is, like, were the apostles not using the gift of healing when they were using handkerchiefs and shadows? Was Jesus not using the gift of healing when he was using... So let's look up those verses, shall we? Some important verses here. Let's pull these back. Healing people. I remember the woman in the crowd. Go wash yourself in the pool. So, that, I mean, there's just, just looking up John 9, there's an instant verse of someone, of Jesus not using touch. So here we see, go wash yourself in the pool of Shalom. He spit on the ground, made the mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the man's eyes, right? Then he spit on the ground, made one made mud with the saliva, and spread mud over the bland, blind man's eyes. Okay, so that contradicts John MacArthur's statement. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats, so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. So there's no touch there. There's, there's, no, there's not even a word there. So I don't know how you reconcile that one. So those seem like two real easy contradictions out of the rip. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their disease and evil spirits were expelled? Okay. So that's, I mean, how many is that? How many is that? That's, that's at least two examples that completely contradict John MacArthur's example of saying the apostles heal like them. Uh, so, 
the question is like, were the apostles not using the gift of healing when they were using handkerchiefs and shadows? Was Jesus not using the gift of healing when he was using mud? Because uh, John, when he was telling them to go wash in the pool, MacArthur suggests that only through touch and only through a word were the gifts of healing used. And I guess you'd have to ask the question as well of the Old Testament. Do you think bathing in the River Jordan in Second Kings five? Or I don't think we need to go in the Old Testament per se, but. Um, there's there's another 40 minutes of, of them going in on this, and I think just, just on a very, very surface level of looking at the scriptures, there's instantly a couple of contradictions right out of the gate. The claim that it always happened instantaneously and the claim that it always happened with a touch or a word are just, those. that's just not true. That is just not true. Um, so, I, I you know, I, I don't I don't want to slander John MacArthur, but I think some of this theology and this 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 need to always speak out against Continuation is to people that believe in healing for today because of the poor representation of some in the hyper charismatic movement. You then attack everyone that's continuationist. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's I don't think that's fair. So check out Remnant uh, Radio's entire stream on this. They go on for another forty minutes and, and get very surgical with all this. Uh, I think it's good. Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as five dollars a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.